हेलो आई एम मिस्टर दिलीप कुमार पाल डबल गोल्ड मेडलिस्ट इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस वर्किंग एज रीडर इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस टुडे इनवाइट स्टूडेंट्स प्लस टू प्लस थ्री पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन एंड दो स्टूडेंट्स हु आर अपेयरिंग कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जामिनेशन टू ए वेरी नाइस टॉपिक दैट इज यूनाइटेड नेशंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड वुल डिस्कस टूडे मेनली हाउ यू एनो मीन्स यूनाइटेड नेशंस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन has been originated how it is composed and what are the purposes of the un we'll concentrate today mainly three aspects of un relating to its origination number 2 composition and number 3 its purposes and this topic is very much useful for students appearing plus 2 plus 3 post graduation and competitive examinations and from this video you will get various important informations as well as data which will be helpful from the academic point of view okay very good If you will like this video, you will subscribe my channel so that you will get future videos which will be helpful to you. Okay, okay. We we'll start today. So first of all, take off how UNO has been originated. But before we discuss how UNO has been originated, how it is composed, and what are its purposes we must know first of all a few lines about the importance of the un because it is the instinct of a human being that he takes interest to know about a particular thing or object which has some value anything which will have value everybody will be interested to know about that it is the symptom of this lovely creation of god which is human being so before we discuss about uno we must know first of all a few lines about the importance of the uno so what importance uno has according to professor carlos p romulo kill the united nations the organization which is like a dam which protected the world from many wars in the past and will do also same in the future it means uno is described as the protector of the world from the wars so uno is inevitable in another occasion also carlos p romulo told kill the united nations by it you will increase the chance of wiping out human beings from the world it means for the survival of human beings for the existence of the human beings for the preservation of human civilization in the earth you know it absolutely necessary it has come into existence when league of nation which was established on 28 june 1919 on the treaty of versailles was failed to prevent the world from war when league of nation was failed at the time the nations decided for an alternative of league of nation so 
UNO was established and it became operational from 24th October 1945. And this UNO is the brainchild of Franklin D. Roosevelt who was the president of America from 1933 to 1945. UNO today is very important. Do you want to exist? Do you want to survive? Then you should be interested to preserve the UNO. Without UNO, we cannot survive. We cannot exist. We will be here no more. So UNO is very important. Now we will discuss how UNO has been originated. Just like Rome is not made in one day. Rome is made after a years of efforts. So UNO has come into existence by a series of discussions, mainly eight. Not mainly, solely eight. The first conference or the first discussion for UNO was held on 12 June 1941. The discussion was held on St. James Palace, London. In the discussion, mainly five nations assembled, Britain, South Africa, New Zealand, Australia and Canada. These nations discussed in London that world peace must be maintained, world peace must be achieved and world peace will be achieved when all nations will cooperate with one another and they will not think war as the mean to solve any type of problem. It means they should keep themselves away from war and they should cooperate with one another to achieve, to promote world peace. Without the efforts of nations, world peace will be like a, an utopia, will be like a dream. So second conference was held on 14 August 1941 on a safe known as principles in the Atlantic Ocean. In the ship principles in the Atlantic Ocean, Prime Minister of Britain, Winston Churchill, who was the Prime Minister of Britain from 1940 to 45, 1951 to 1955, he attended along with him Franklin and Roosevelt. 32nd president of USA also attended. So the conversation was made between Winston Churchill and Franklin D. Roosevelt. And they chalked out some plans known as Atlantic Charter. They discussed that step must be taken for world peace Steps must be taken how all nations will live in peace within their boundary and in every nation that type of government will be established which people wish. In all nations human rights, human values must be preserved. No nation will have weakness for the territories of others. It means it is against territorial aggrandizement. So they passed a series of proposals known as Atlantic Charter. The third conversation was, third meeting was held in Washington on 1st January 1942 by 26 nations. In this meeting, 
these 26 nations agreed to implement Atlantic Charter because the because the provisions of Atlantic Charter are noble provisions. So these in this conference, 26 nations agreed to implement principles of Atlantic Charter and they agreed to give cooperation of all to achieve war peace and they also agreed not to give cooperation to those nations which are against war peace. The fourth conference was held in Moscow on November 1943. In this conference, United Kingdom, America, Soviet Russia and China attended. In the Moscow conference, for the first time it was discussed that to have international peace, to maintain world peace, an organization must be formed and this organization will work for world peace and the name of the organization will be United Nations Organization. Again, in the fifth conference which was held in Tehran, capital of Iran on December 1943, Stalin, leader of Soviet Russia, who was a dictator from 1929 to 1953, Churchill and Roosevelt attended. And the Tehran conference, they discussed that the world organization which will be made, it will be open for small nations and large nations. It will not be only for the large nations. Small nations and large nations will be welcomed to this organization. And in Tehran conference, it was discussed to implement the decisions of the Moscow conference and decisions of the UN declaration and decision of the Atlantic Charter. Then the next meeting was held in Dumbarton Oaks Mansion in America. The meeting was held on October 1944. In the meeting, United Kingdom, Soviet Russia, America and China attended. In Dumbarton Oaks meeting, the blueprint of UNO was prepared. How the UNO will be what will be its boundary, what will be its functions, etc. were mentioned. Again, in the seventh meeting was held in the Yalta, Russia. It was held on February 1945 and the meeting was held among Churchill, Stalin and Roosevelt. In the Yalta conference, it was decided that five big powers of the world like United States of America, Union of Soviet Social Republic, China, France and Britain should be given veto power. It means whenever any decision in the UNO will be taken, the support of these five nations must be required. And in the Yalta conference, you discussed that another conference about the formation of UNO will be held on 25th April 1945 in San Francisco, America. It will be the final conference and on the basis of Yalta's conference decision on 25th April 1945, another conference was held in San Francisco, America. In the San Francisco Conference of America, it was discussed among nations how to form UNO and on 26 June 1945, they 
the president all the nations 51 nations they put their signature on the draft of the uno and finally uno came into existence on 24th october 1945 so this is all about the formation of the uno so uno has not come into existence abruptly or accidentally it is the result of deliberations of eight meetings okay so this is all about the origination of uno now we'll discuss organs of uno what are the organs of uno just like a human being has some organs through which a human being will function in the similar manner uno has some organs through which uno functions or operates previously it had six organs like general assembly security council secretariat social icg internal court justice economic social council and trusteeship council but now trusteeship council was no more it has been abolished or it was abolished on 1st november 1994 because trusteeship council was a council which was looking after those areas which were rulerless because during those time there were some areas which were not being ruled by anybody so these areas were given to trusteeship council but when gradually all the areas were made independent and last one was palau it was also made independent then there was no area on the trusteeship council so there was no need for the trusteeship council so it was abolished on 1st november 1994 now un has five organs number one is general assembly general assembly is the formulative organ of uno it is the organ which prepares the policies principles of the uno it is like the parliament of the uno you know it is the like legislature of the uno number 2 is the security council security council is the enforcing organ of the general assembly because general assembly will make the policy but unless the policy will be implemented what is the use of that policy so it is the responsibility of the security council to implement that policy and security council consists of 15 members five are permanent 10 are non permanent its total member is 15 number 3 secretariat secretariat is the office of the un it communicates decision of the uno to its member nations it maintains the records of the uno and it is the main office of the uno number 3 icj icj is the international court of justice it is in geneva switzerland the function of the international court of justice is to solve medal immediately medal disputes between states or among the states because in the international level sometimes disputes are observed disputes are amorst among nations so if these disputes will not be amorst if these disputes will be amorst and if these disputes will not be solved international peace will not be possible so it is the responsibility of the international court of justice icj to solve disputes of the international level it solve disputes on the basis of ethical principles international laws decisions of 
eminent jurists, judicial books, then different type of precious documents. But the decision of the ICJ is not mandatory for all nations. Nations may carry it out, may or may not carry it out. They give respect to the decision of the ICJ. Next one is Economic Social Council. Another organ of UNO is the Economic Social Council. The function of the Economic Social Council is to solve various economic and social problems of different nations. It targets, it aims to promote social and economic development of all nations. It is not parousia. It will not concentrate its attention to only big nations. It wants economic and social development of all nations, maybe small, maybe big. Again, it helps, it provides economic aids to different nations for social advancement and economic advancement. Then these are all the organs of UNO. In addition with it, UNO now has 193 members. Membership of UNO is open for all. But it is the option for nations. They may become or they may not become. Till now, Taiwan, Switzerland, they have not become membership of the UNO. The membership of the UNO is open for all. But no nations will be compelled to take membership. They may or they may not take the membership of UNO. So, UNO has 193 members. The members are two types. One is original members, others are subsequent members. Original members means those nations, 51 nations, those who had signed in the documents of UNO when it was made on 26 June 1945. They were the original members. India was also in this list. And those nations which came afterwards, they were the subsequent members of the UNO. So, this is all about the composition of the UNO. Now, you see, what are the purposes or what are the objects of the UNO? UNO has some objects for which it has been created. The first object of the UNO is to protect the world from wars. Because people of the world have been experienced by two great wars. How wars are dangerous for the destruction of human beings and to cripple economic of nations. Wars are very dangerous. Even war wars can destroy civilization. So the purpose of the UNO is to protect the world from any type of wars. Wars should be kept away from the world. Number two, promote trade relations. Another object of the UNO is to promote trade relations among nations. Because now in the world, no nation can exist by itself. Every nation depends on others. No nation can exist by itself. For example, in India. India is importing crude oil from Saudi Arabia. And India is supplying medicines to Saudi Arabia. Again, India is supplying different type of medicines to America and India is importing different type of sophisticated technologies from America. So no nation can exist by itself. So there must be trade relationship among nations. By trade relationship among nations, all nations will be benefited. So the function of the UNO is to promote relations among nations. Number three, 
another function of the UNO is to work for world peace. Peace in the world will have to be maintained. Just like if a person want to make progress, there must be peace in himself. Without peace in mind, a person cannot make prosperity. In a similar manner, in the world, all nations will develop at that time, whenever in the international level, there will be peace, there will be tranquility. It is the function of the UNO to promote world peace, to promote tranquility in the world. Fourth, promote, protect human rights. Another function of the UNO is to protect human rights, human values. It wants to give human beings basic human rights. It sees how people of all areas of the world will enjoy rights. They will be treated like human beings and it wants equal rights for both men and women, equal respect to both small nations and large nations. Another function of the UNO is to promote relations among nations. How all nations will be closer to one another. How among nations there will be intimate relationship. How nations will reside peacefully. It is the object of the UNO. Finally, promote socio-economic development of nations. Another function of the UNO is that it sees how all nations will have social and economic development. It wants balanced development of all nations. Because still now, in some nations, people are deprived from basic facilities, basic amenities, even People of some countries are not getting food, drinking water, and other necessities of life. So it is the object of the UNO to promote social and economic development of all nations, irrespective of any regions, any continents, any area. So we have discussed in this video how UNO has been originated, how it is composed and what are the objectives or purposes of the UNO. Okay students, I think my students have got a lot of benefits from this videos. Not only will, not only you should enjoy this video you should collect important facts of this UNO video you should collect various informations from this video which will be useful to you so that this video will be benefited to you okay my students thank you to all goodbye to all my students please smile again we will be here in another video subscribe my channel so that we will get new videos which will be helpful to you okay thank you to you all goodbye to you all thank you bye